Cole, Skylar Collins here. I uh, wanted to take a moment to talk about something that's been on my mind the last, uh, oh, I don't know, 18 hours or so. And that is, you know, I, I guess I could say the prospects for the future or you know, where do we go from here for the, the voluntarians or for the libertarians. Now, let me just kind of just, just do all this and kind of get all of this out and, and then maybe in the end, you know, there'll be some sense to it. But anyways, what I wanted to talk about was, or at least what I wanted to get off my mind was, I guess the reason that, that one would be a libertarian or a voluntarian. Now, when I, when I first discovered economics and I first discovered economic law and economic principles and I studied these things for a few years, I was, I was absolutely convinced that, you know, what, what the government engages in when it, when it interferes in trade, it creates regulation, when it, when it taxes and spends, when it does all these things, these create bad in the economy. These, these are inefficient, it wastes resources, it, it, you know, it you know, quite literally harms people and harms society and harms the market. And without any of these things, everybody would be more prosperous, more productive, um, and I believe we would have more peace in the world. So yeah, I mean, the, the lack of peace that we have, the lack of progress, the lack of prosperity, to whatever extent, I mean, we don't know what it would be because this, we, the state is everywhere. And, you know, there's hundreds of states, so we can kind of collectivize it all. The state is everywhere. It's been everywhere. It'll, it'll probably continue to be everywhere. So we don't know. We don't know what our prosperity and our productivity and our wealth and all these things would be without the state. But what I what I am a very firm believer of is that if, if things would be better, we would have more wealth. Technology would be greater. Human suffering would be far less without the state. I absolutely believe that as a libertarian and as an, as, an, as, an, as somebody who has studied and has a, a fairly good understanding of how an economy works and so forth. So, but, you know, when it, when it comes to why somebody would be a libertarian, at, at first, for me, it was, it was those consequentialist reasons. It was, I, I but as as I, as I continue to understand libertarian theory and, and discover voluntarism and anarchism and stuff, for me, it's, it's for me personally now, and for many people in the same position, primarily it is an ethical, moral position. Quite simply, I oppose violence and aggression, and in the, in, in the initiation of aggression against somebody, as against an innocent person. I, I consider that to be an act of evil, an act of, of injustice for, for somebody to do that. I, I, I personally don't want to do that, and I don't want anybody to do that to me. So, if, you know, a group of people want to, to go somewhere and, and aggress against each other, they're, they're well within their right, and I, I'm not interested in pushing my values or my beliefs on anybody else. But I am interested when, when somebody tries to push their beliefs and their values onto me. Which is what happens when any when anytime anybody makes a law or creates a government, that's exactly what they're doing. They're pushing their beliefs about how humans should behave and how humans should organize themselves onto me. They're forcing it onto me through violence. You can't get away from that. That's exactly what government is. There's there's no way getting away from it. So at this point, because I oppose all of that for for ethical and moral reasons, I, I can say that I'm a voluntarist. I believe all human Interaction should be based on mutual consent, should be voluntary, and, and, and should be respectful and peaceful. And I believe that's the only way. So that that where I'm at now, that, that sort of preempts any discussion that I could have, you know, political discussion with somebody about, oh, should government do this or government do that? And and the, the question, no matter what it is, even if it's should the government give a bunch of poor kids a bunch of food? The question is always going to be no, because the, the means is violence, and I oppose violence. I absolutely oppose it, and, and I hope you do too, and I think a lot of people do. They just don't realize that this government that they believe is good is really not. It is founded on and it is maintained primarily on perceived legitimacy, and when that begins to erode, then on violence.
Okay, so so when there is no perceived legitimacy, the, it, it, the, the, the modus operandi of, of government, of the state, is violence. It's coercion, it's force, and, 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 not, and not in order to protect anybody. People can protect themselves and protect each other, that's just fine. I don't, I don't, I don't oppose people, you know, uh, paying for security, but that's, that's not why the state uses violence. The state uses violence to protect itself. I mean, just, just read Chapter 4, The Anatomy of the State, of my book, Everything Voluntary, by Murray Rothbard, and that's, that's the exact argument that he makes. The state prosecutes crimes against the state far more heavily than it does crimes against people. The state, the state is, is self-interested. People who work for the state, the individuals in the state, I mean, we have to remember that the state is a, a collection of individuals. Their, their primary interest is, is towards themselves. And, and the means by which they by which they gain, by which they profit, is is force and violence. And just it's it's an ethical thing, it's a moral thing, it's a moral question. But I cannot stress that enough. I I oppose the state on ethical grounds. I also happen to think that it's inefficient and it and it and it, and it it's it's re, uh, wastes resources and these other consequentialist arguments. But primarily where I'm at right now is it's, it's an ethical position. It's based on violence, and I just I absolutely cannot support that. So now that's not to say that I that I have any um, any high hopes about where where we're going from here. I mean, I I, I think and call me a pessimist. I think I got to be completely honest, and and maybe this will change in the future. But right now, I am a bit of a a bit of a pessimist, a pessimistic voluntarist or a pessimistic anarch anarchist, and and there there are a lot of people in that, in that same camp. But I, I think that we might always have the state in some form with us. But but that doesn't mean that I'm going to take my eye off the ball and I'm going to suddenly turn around and, and be okay with that. A, a, a perfect analogy is crime. We're human beings and, and, and there are always people who want to hurt and harm other people uh, in whatever way. And so I think as human beings, we will always have crime with us. But I oppose crime. I am anti-crime. So I will, I will continue to, to hold that position and say that I am anti-crime. I will never support crime, even though we will always have crime with us. That, it doesn't mean that I should just accept it and be okay with it and think that you know it's somehow legitimate and, and try to work within crime to, to make, you know, I mean, it, there's different strategies one can employ, but we'll always have crime with us. Likewise, we may always have the state or monopoly government with us. But that, that doesn't mean that, that I'm not going to oppose it. I'm not going to hold this belief and, and, and continue to oppose violence, to, to continue to be anti-state. I, 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 would, I, would, I, I, I can't, I don't see any way for me personally now Believing what I believe, understanding what I understand about the nature of the state and 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 violence that the violence that it employs, how I could somehow come around and no longer be anti-state. I, I just I cannot see that. I think I've crossed that line, and and I just I just don't see it. Now, that that's not to say that there aren't ways to reduce the level of of statist crime. You, we could call it. Um, in the world, and there might not be good strategies for that. And I, I think strategies can be evaluated, but I just that's just something kind of on my mind. I've had a um, conversation with somebody recently, kind of about that, and I just until I get it out, it just kind of it just kind of floats around in there. And so I just I thought I'd take this opportunity to get that out, and that's just that's how it is for me. And you know, whatever whatever the merits of of one form of government over another, they they all come down to the use of force and violence, and I I, I can't. I wouldn't, I wouldn't force my beliefs and my values onto somebody else. I, I would hope that they wouldn't do it with me. Unfortunately, too many would. That's that's why government exists today. There's there's a perceived legitimacy that it's good and that it it serves mankind and it's where you know we're benefactors for. But it, it's absolutely false. So that's just that's where we're at. Anyways, um, have a good day.